hi guys you're welcome back my name is Bukome Bike Crown so the origin of Quran's name for Jesus we're gonna be checking it out in this video so let's check it out guys in a previous video, we explored the actual name of Jesus. The English name Jesus is a transliteration of how his name appeared in Greek, Jesus, which itself is a transliteration of the Aramaic name Yeshua. Almost all of the modern names of Jesus in almost every modern language derive either from the Greek Jesus, like his Latin and Amharic names, or directly from the Aramaic. But there's one very prominent exception, one version of his name that has perplexed scholars for generations, the Arabic name of Jesus as it appears in the Quran. To help unlock this mystery, I've enlisted the help of Dr. Ahmed Al Jalad, a professor at The Ohio State University and an expert in pre-Islamic Arabic. Unlike Christian Arabic, Christian Arabic uh, uses a, an Arabicized form of the name Yeshua, mm. and it comes into Christian Arabic as Yeshua, which is completely expected. But Jesus' name in the Quran is, depending on the reading tradition, the most common reading tradition, Hafsan Asim, uh, renders his name as Isa, Isa. with a Ayn at the beginning, a long Ya, a Sin, and a final long A vowel. But when we look at the Quranic spelling, the consonantal text of the Quran, the name is spelled Ayn, Ya, Sin, Ya. And some reading traditions render it as Isa as well. As a non-Arabic speaker, I'm not particularly good at pronouncing that initial ayn, a letter produced in the back of your throat called a pharyngeal consonant. I'll try my best throughout this video, but rely on Dr. Al Jalad for the correct pronunciation. So the name of Jesus in Quranic Arabic is Isa. Isa. But the problem is, unlike his Arabic name as pronounced by Arab Christians, his Quranic Arabic name has no obvious linguistic connection to the Aramaic Yeshua. The ayn is at the beginning instead of the end. The vowels don't correspond. So how did this transition happen? Some have argued that the pronunciation may have changed over the centuries as it was transmitted from Aramaic into Quranic Arabic, but linguists are not satisfied with any explanation for how that change may have happened. The simple fact of the matter is, the Quran was our only evidence. There was no earlier attestation of this name, Aisa, to help us piece together its origins. Until now. Maybe. Mm. A few years ago, while surveying with his research team in northern Jordan, Dr. Al Jalad made a discovery that may have cracked the case. A Safayetic inscription that might bear a pre-Islamic version of the Quranic Arabic name of Jesus. But before we get to that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a nutritional drink that puts all of your daily vitamins in one simple drink. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to simple drinks that I consume on a daily basis, I have always been one of those people who drinks way too many cups of coffee each morning, always at least three cups a day. Not super proud of that fact. But to me, drinking a cup of AG1 is a preferred energizing health routine compared to that daily hit of caffeine. It's much more than a greens powder too. One scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. And it's an easy morning ritual to get used to as well. Just mix one scoop or travel pack with eight ounces of water. That's it, super simple and it tastes great. And it works with any lifestyle. If you're the type of person who always hits the gym, then you'll appreciate the magnesium in AG1 to help with muscle soreness, or maybe you don't work out at all and you just want to know for a fact that you're getting all the necessary vitamins and minerals to fill any nutritional gaps in your diet. To get started on your order, go to athleticgreens.com slash religion for breakfast. Athletic Greens is offering the Religion for Breakfast audience a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packets with your first purchase. And with that, back to the show. Safayetic is an ancient South Semitic script that people in southern Syria and northern Jordan used to write all the various dialects of Old Arabic, which are closely related to Quranic Arabic. In fact, many of the 28 Safayetic letters correspond to modern Arabic letters. Scholars think the script was used between the 1st century BCE and the 4th century CE give or take a few centuries. So this is during the late Roman period and earlier during the reign of the Nabataean kingdom, an Arab kingdom that built the famous ruins of the city of Petra. Here are a few examples of Safedic inscriptions on screen. These inscriptions were discovered in what's now known as the Black Desert, mm. a region of thousands of square kilometers of volcanic rock spanning southern Syria and northern Jordan. And although it looks like a desolate place, humans have lived in this region since the Neolithic period, and it was well-traveled by traders and 
and nomads during the Nabataean and Roman periods. Many of these people would stop along their journeys and carve Safayetic inscriptions on the rocks. One database of Safayetic inscriptions records over 50,000 texts. So this supposedly desolate basalt desert is actually a huge wealth of archaeological data. Dr. Al Jalad and his team discovered the inscription in question during the 2019 survey season. It was situated nearby a watering hole, potentially a rest station on a trade route. As you can see on screen, the text winds back and forth, probably because whoever inscribed it was trying to avoid other inscriptions on the same stone. So what does the inscription say? It contained a prayer to a deity that had not yet appeared in the corpus, and the prayer itself was also unique. So this man uh, named Wahbel, uh, which uh, uh, would translate to gift of God, gift of El, uh, recorded being at this place and grieving for uh, his uncle. And then he asks a deity that is spelled in Safiatic, Ain Sin Ya, okay, so very close to Quranic Isa, Ain Sin Ya, to Unsurhu Min Kafirika, so to help him against those who deny you. So to summarize, we have an invocation here inscribed by a man grieving for his recently deceased uncle. After the formula, he ends his invocation with a prayer. Based on the grammatical case and vocabulary of the prayer, the man seems to be calling upon a deity that Aljalad argues is compatible with the Quranic Aisa. Mm. Ain Sin Ya is the way you would, would spell Aisa in Safiyidic because the Safiyidic script does not write internal long vowels. So when a long vowel occurs in, inside of a word, it's not represented graphically. But the final ya is present, and that corresponds to the, the Arabic spelling of the name Isa in the Quran, which is Ain Ya Sin Ya. Right? So this is a one to one match. A one to one match. So are we dealing with a prayer to Jesus? Well, notice the rest of the prayer Help him against those who deny you. Based on the vocabulary here, Al Jalad argues that we're dealing with a Christian invocation. The phrase, those who deny you in particular, has a certain Christian ring to it. The denying of Christ being a major theme in the Gospels and a common motif in Christian polemics. In other words, a Christian may have carved this inscription, and the divine name spelled Ein Sin Ya is none other than Jesus Christ. This is significant because most scholars of the past few decades have argued that the Quranic name Aisa was a much later development, mm. the result of the Aramaic name Yeshua being imperfectly transmitted into Arabic around the time of Muhammad during the 6th and 7th centuries. Mm. But if this text is indeed referencing Jesus, that would push back the timeline of this development by hundreds of years. <clears throat> But the question of its etymology remains, the origins of this name, Ein Sin Ya. Why would this hypothetical Christian inscribing a prayer for his uncle in the middle of the black desert spell the name of Jesus like this instead of something that sounds more like Yeshua? There is just no obvious linguistic relationship between these two names. Mm. So what's the etymology? First thing to note is that the name Isa, Ein Sin Ya, is attested as a personal name in Safiyarek. Nice. in a pagan context as well. So it was a pre-existing Arabian name. And what seems to be the case is that uh, Arabic speakers equated a pre-existing Arabian name with the name Yeshua, mm. right? Through perhaps phono-semantic matching. Phono-semantic matching. This is when people incorporate a foreign word into one's language by matching it with a pre-existing word with a similar sound and or a significant meaning. Phonosemantic matching happens in the Quran. Take, for example, John the Baptist. The English name John comes from the Greek Ioannes, which itself derives from the Hebrew name nice. Yohanan. But in the Quran, John the Baptist is called Yahye, which is not related to the name Yohanan, but oh. rather is a pre-existing Arabic name that we find in Safiyetic inscriptions, and it was just adopted for John the Baptist. Al-Jalad argues that the same thing happened for the Quranic name of Jesus. So the, the name Isa could mean purchaser or redeemer, right? This noun pattern is uh, refers to one who does the action of the verb, right? Sort of a participle. So it would be the purchaser or redeemer. And perhaps that meaning motivated Arabic speaking Christians to equate the name with Jesus because Jesus, unlike the pre-Islamic pagan gods, was a redeeming savior. You have lots of inscriptions that uh, invoke the gods for salvation, for escape, for uh, deliverance, 
but the gods never, the ancient gods never pay or give up anything to do this, right? They simply grant these wishes. They're simply meant to grant these mm. uh, boons and wishes. But the but Jesus would have been di distinguished from these other gods because of this redemptive aspect, and therefore, it's possible that the name Aise, which they would have understood to mean redeemer, was equated with Jesus because of that aspect of redemption. Thus, based on phonosemantic matching, some Christian Arabic speakers may have adopted this name as the name for Jesus, not because it was directly related to Yeshua in any linguistic sense, but rather because it was an existing name in their culture that had a significant meaning related to Jesus' divine role in their theology. Al Jalad concludes that if he's correct that this text mentions Jesus, then this is the earliest Arabic evidence of Christianity ever found, perhaps predating the 5th century. Christian authors like St. Jerome do mention Arab nomads converting to Christianity in the 4th century, but these are second-hand sources. So this unique text may be a rare witness to the transition from Arabian paganism to Christianity among the nomads of the 4th century. And moreover, this evidence may explain the name of Jesus in the Quran, as it would have been known to Muhammad and his contemporaries on the Arabian Peninsula during the early formative years of Islam. Mm -hmm. Well, this is so deep, guys. Very, very deep. The Isa, the Yeshua. The most important thing is that, you know, Jesus is called in different names depending on your religion. In in Christianity we call him Yeshua, we call him, you know, Elohim, we call him diverse names. Also in Quran, I'm sure that's how it is done too. Well, this was really nice, this was really informative. I hope you liked something, Sha. <laughs> I hope you learned something guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more. Like, share and comment. I will see you in the next one.